destroyed the Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway is my beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. special moon over Broadway. It dips low and mixes with the laughter, the clack of heels, and the light flung downward from the spectaculars. And occasionally people notice it and squeeze somebody's hand, point at it, wink at it, then walk into whatever shadow they've planned for the night. And the moon holds briefly, rides its long, slow curve across town, then drives the river. Broadway's happier. <laughs> was in the land of the tenements, the district of the rat and the low rent, the moon completes its transit rapidly. That's why the light had to be furnished by the city. Specifically the spotlight from the squad car parked in the alley, and cutting the darkness out of the backyard. The smoke from Detective Muggerman's cigarette curls up into it. He points, too. Right there, Danny. Uh-huh. Died not too long ago. Could be suicide, you think? No, no, I don't. This girl fell or was pushed. Neck broken, see? The attitude of her body? Yeah, I saw it. That's why I said maybe suicide. Women don't pick backyards or tenement houses, Muggerman. They register in high-class hotels or find a bridge, you know that. Yeah, most of them, Danny, not all. And take a look. Bruises on the throat. Here. Look here, bruise. Another one here. Uh huh. This girl died instantly. These bruises were from a beating. Then she got thrown, huh? I'd say so. Who is she? Well, I can't tell. No identification, Danny. I'd say she was about 22, huh? 22. What? Uh, nothing. But take care of the technical boys when they get here, Muggerman. I'll get back to you later. And the rows of Mazda lit windows, like yellow posters, piled one on top of the other against the foot grime tenement walls. And centered in them, the leaners upon sills, the man whose arm warms the bare shoulders of the woman at his side. The kids leaning far out, shrieking to each other across the littered yard. Littered now with a new refuse. The dead girl with the black hair, broken, thrown away. And finally the shroud over her that draws the curtain on the spectacle. It turns out the 20-watt bulbs in tenement galleries. Then the night time, used up by the seekers of their private dead. The men and women beckoned out of sleep to identify the girl lying in the morgue. And while rubbing sleep out of their eyes, they tell you they don't know her, have never seen her. The halting, dragging parade of lost faces. And then the one that dawn touches, the one you won't easily forget. The one who looks at the girl and knows her and tells you. Well, she went out last night. Early, said she'd be back in a little while. Well, who is she, Mr. Corbett? Eleanor, that's Eleanor. Someone you've known long, a friend of... My wife. Eleanor's my wife. May I sit down, please? Is it all right if I sit down? No, of course. On that bench against the wall, Mr. Corbin. Can I get you something? A glass of water? Hmm. You understand I'll have to... something? I didn't know that she was gone all night. I woke up this morning and she wasn't beside me. That's the first I knew, and I reported to the police, and they asked me to describe her, and I did in detail, and they said, please come down. <laughs> well, that happened to her. You, you tell me why. Help us find out why, Mr. Coleman. Well, if I can, I, I don't understand it. I just don't understand it at all. Your wife went out like this at other times, stayed out all night? What are you trying to say to me? We have to know, Mr. Corbett. If you want your, your murderers, you'll have to tell us a lot of things well, that maybe... Well, there's nothing. There's nothing to tell us. Yeah, I know was a good wife. She was beautiful. Sometimes she'd like to go out in the evening alone to a movie or just for a walk. She told you she was going to a movie last night? Well, yes, that's what she said. Well, I never checked on her. I'd just go to bed and read and wait for her. Last night I fell asleep just leave me alone with him just for a minute, please? Please. I'll wait in the hall for you, Mr. Carter. I waited. For as long as it took me to smoke two cigarettes. For as long as it took Mr. Corbett to consider that his wife lay dead in a public morgue. 
Then Mr. Corbett came out into the corridor, took a drink of water from the fountain, and nodded that he was ready to go. I showed him to the street. I watched him go. Near the corner, he stopped walking, leaned against the building, bowed his head, and ran his hand alongside his cheek. Once the woman stopped and stared at him, then hurried away. Then back into my office to consider the various reports from the coroner, the technicians, the lab boys, and stare at the photograph taken of Mrs. Eleanor Corbett in death and retouched to represent a reasonable facsimile of Mrs. Corbett living. And go now back to the tenements, knock on the door, show the picture, ask the question, get no answer. And between the fourth and fifth floors, a man blocks your way. He's painting the banisters, and you wait until he straightens up. <coughs> Tough job, huh? It is. Do you work here all the time, or just this job of painting? Who are you, mister? Oh, police. Danny Clover. I work here all the time. Name's Lust, the soup, where I go with the rent and the cold water. Right now, I'm up to my elbows in yellow paint. That answer you? Mm, uh, take a look at this picture. It's coming now, huh? What? I've been expecting cops to tap me on the shoulder. The picture. What about it? You ever seen this girl before? Uh-huh. Last night, about ten. How? Explain the last question. What do you mean, how? Under what circumstances? That means how. I just finished putting on the first coat of paint, and I was in my room. Mm. She rang the bell, wanted to know where was the room of Al Martin Rumor. I told her, went back to my coffee and locks. Where is Al Martin's room? Top of the stairs, right there. Look, mister, you want to know why I didn't come running to the police? The girl's dead. I don't scratch over nobody's grave. That's for you to come scratching. Stick around, Lusk. Sure, I got a week's banisters yet to paint. I'm Danny Clover, police. Come on in. You want a drink? Some Johnny Walker in the bottom of that bottle. Is your name Al Martin? Al Rome's there with me. I'm Frank Hagen. It's about what happened last night, Frank. Yeah, I know. I figured. Have you ever seen this girl before? Let me see. This the girl you found, huh? Yeah, yeah, I saw her last night. With your roommate? She came to see him. I got introduced. Her name's Eleanor Corbett. It could have been. I didn't take the time to remember. I said hello and walked out. How long did you stay away? As long as it takes to walk from here to 40 seconds. Feed, see a double feature and come back. Wait a minute. It was longer than that. All night movie house. I fell asleep. Got back here long enough to put on a clean shirt and go look for the job again. Was Al here when you got back? Nobody. Just a smell of perfume. I had to scrub a lipstick stain off a cheese glass to get a drink of water. Where's your roommate now? Al? Al wakes. Looks a bit down at Atlas Airframe. If he ain't on his way to California. He always wanted to go to California. I'd say this was an A-1 excuse for going. Wouldn't you say it was an A-1 excuse for going? I have permission. And I got a schedule to push. See the sign in the front office pinned on my denim? It says Bella Fapp, final assembly. And you see this yellow rim around the sign? That means I'm the pusher and attention must be paid. I'll pay attention, Miss Fapp, I promise. Mrs. Mrs. Fapp. I'm working at it, so no hanky-panky, huh? I wouldn't think of it. Hey, they sent you to me for work? I got news for you that'll break your heart. This morning I can use you. That bench with the worker missing from in front of it, you take that one. Go steady your hands a little in honest toil. Well, let me try to explain it to you, Mrs. Fast. I'm from the police. <laughs> from the police? So that'll prevent you from picking up a few part-time nickels? I'd like to talk to Al Martin. Al Martin. A worker who don't show up for work. You mean Al Martin hasn't shown up this morning? Now the telephone. How much can they demand from a woman? Bella Fab, stop crying. Huh? Al Martin, that's no good. Where? All right, so I'll send some boys down to mop him up. You want a job as a poor lady, Mr. Police? Take mine. Well, it's in good health. Martin? Drunk. Drunk as a skunk in Patty's bar on Ninth Avenue. Now keep pushing, Mrs. Trapp. I'll go get Martin for you. My pleasure. <laughs> What? Al Martin, is he here? Since last night. Hey, you'll need a drink to make you as equal. Honest, you will. You'll need a carload. Where is he? Ed. 
Bend your nose to the crook of my long, slender finger. Now glance your eye along it, and that will be Al Martin. In the back booth around the corner through the paper flower draped doorway. Thanks. Hey, don't go yet. I'll give you a jigger on the house for taking him out of here. He made trouble? Not trouble, only grief. All last night he was in here wiping his tears on my bar apron. Then he passed out over that table to sleep it off. I come to open the joint in the early morning hours. He's waiting for me, still passed out. I'm tired sobering him up. This time you try. Can I go now? I just thought I'd explain him being a defense waker. He can't afford moods like this at a time like this. This is a time when every man must come to the aid, not go to California. Al. Al, I'm from the police. I want... Al, wake up. Wake up. I shook him. The bottle slipped out of his fingers, fell, rolled on the floor. The jukebox blared, and Patty at the bar blew on the glass and polished it. I shook him again. None of it woke him. None of it would ever wake him. A stain of blood under his coat told me that. The paper flowers on the doorway rustled with a new wind. Al Martin was dead. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Summer's day is only a few hours old on Broadway, and already the street wads up its screaming and bounces it against the morning. The gutters have been swept down, washed clean, the neon dusted, the bulbs replaced in the spectacular, the swarm released from the steel trap hurtling, shuttling underground. And the summer's day stretches out before Broadway, languid and empty, waiting to be filled, waiting to be torn apart. <laughs> Headquarters, we didn't have that problem. The day was planned. Maybe the night and the days and nights after. All that had to be done was to fill it in with reasons that two people were newly dead in the city. Eleanor Corbett and Al Martin, who had met for a time in the tenement room, then parted. Then in another place, in another darkness, found death waiting for them. And to help you rid yourself of it, your left hand, Sergeant Tartaglia. Danny, I am not in the mood for chit-chatter this morning. All right, Gino. Any way you want it. The events of the past two days, the murders have drawn a blind, so to speak, down across my naturally good-natured self. If you say so, Gino. I will not even regale you with the flavor of the Zimmerman buns now lying in my locker waiting for my teeth to sink into them. Uh, take it back a notch, Gino. Zimmerman buns. Baked by my neighbor, the baker down the street from me, Mr. Zimmerman. His specialty, Zimmerman buns. Oh, thanks for clearing it up for me. Don't mention it. To work. In a matter of the death of one Al Martin, the murder weapon, the steak knife, is now being handled by the boys in technical. They come up with anything? Two dozen assorted fingerprints from the fingers of inhabitants of the bar who have been questioned, recorded, and sent on their way, as not one so far has failed to produce an alibi. Uh, anything else? Established by technical that according to the position of her body in the yard, Mrs. Corbett was pushed out of the tenement hall window after death. Established that Frank Hagen, roommate of Martin, is a man who cannot hold a job. Established? For something else? No. Yeah. A personal question, Danny. How is it a man doesn't know where his wife disappears two nights? Now, I'm speaking of Mr. Corbett, Danny. How can a husband not know? Good question, Detective. Why don't I go ask the man such a good question? Your mind. Goes without saying. I need an answer to such a thing. Go, Danny. Go already. Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Clover. I'm busy. started to say you were busy, Mr. Corbett. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. In here, in the bedroom. But look, it's a small bedroom, Mr. Clover. No chairs. If you don't mind, I know it's not made up, but don't sit on the bed. Look, I'll bring in something. No, that's all right. I'll stand right here. 
I was packing Eleanor's things. Storing? No, no. Um, now, look, don't think I... Well, I know other husbands save their wives' clothes. And I'm giving Eleanor's away. I called the Goodwill Mission. They're sending a truck. Just go ahead with your pack. Did she look nice in this dress? She fitted her well. Oh, I guess that's no way to talk. You were happy together, Mr. Corbin? Oh, I was proud when I was with her. Maybe there wouldn't be people anywhere around, but people didn't have to see me with it and make me feel proud. Just to touch it. She had beautiful hair. I see. Oh, it was just beautiful. You should have seen her in this, Miss Clover. When she got it, she danced around the room. I watched it. When she got near me, she threw her arms around my neck. She kissed me. I remember because her hair was flying and got between her lips. We laughed. Mr. Corbett. We laughed. And danced. And lay there. Mr. With... Corbett, did you know where your wife went the night before last, the, the night she was killed? Well, of course it was. She went to school. School? Well, what school? Well, my wife was learning ceramics. Her friend next door talked her into going. I didn't want her to go to ceramics. What's that? Ashtrays. But... Bernice talked to her in the going. Why didn't you tell me this yesterday? Because my wife was found in a strange place. My wife was found on the edge of an alley in a place she should never have been. So I lied. First thing any husband would have done. Do you know what she was doing there? No, and I don't want to know. Even if you find out, I don't want you to tell me. You've got to promise me that, Mr. Clover. Even if you find out why Eleanor was where she was, don't tell me. I don't want to know why... I don't want to know. He finally got his hands away from me from clutching my coat and trying to pull out of its fabric the promise he wanted, needed, so the pride could well up inside him once more. Then he turned away and began packing her things again. And the dead wife belonged only to him. He turned once to show me another dress she had worn. I never really saw it. The door I was closing blotted it out. The girl who asked me in was plain, except for the eagerness in her eyes, except for the hunger in them that waited to feast on the excitement I'd brought into her chintz-curtained life. I did my whole room myself, Mr. Clover. We did the whole thing. Well, you should have seen it when I moved in. Fair and ugly. I only want you to tell me... Oh, now it's happy, don't you think? The room, I mean. Right. Happy. I lie awake at night and I can hear it sing. I mean, inside me, it's singing and... You went to school night before last with Mrs. Corbett. Oh, that's the night she was found dead, wasn't it? In that awful place. What happened to her, Mr. Clover? How was she killed? I mean, well, you know, the papers, they don't always... She'd been beaten, thrown out of a window. That's all the papers said. I saw... Brought it... what, Bernice? I... I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know what I thought. Was it usual for you to go to ceramics class with Mrs. Corbett? Every week. Of course, there was this time when she had somewhere better to go. She was very pretty. Where did she go? The secret. She made me swear I'd keep it a secret. Girls like Eleanor always trust me, Mr. Clover. I'm that kind of girl. I... She went to Al Martin's. Did she tell you that's where she was going? You can tell it now, Bernice. She's dead. Was... It was the only time she ever went there. The only time she ever told me about it, I mean. She said she had to tell him off. He was bothering her. She told you it was Martin? Oh, no. No, she... She didn't say his name. She just said there were two boys living in this room together, and one of them had been making advances, and she wanted it to stop. And... Why are some people so lucky, Mr. Clover? me. I take night classes and try to improve my mind and... Oh, I should have been dead. Not a girl like Eleanor. Oh. What 
do you want from me, Clover? Just tell me what you want. I got enough trouble. I gotta have you. What kind of trouble have you got, Frank? I'm 32 years, Clover. My home's a stinking room and a stinking walk-up. I got no job. I once had a friend, but he got stabbed. Now, you tell me your trouble will knock our heads against each other and shed tears. How come you're not working? Plenty jobs run? Sure, plenty. Me, I got qualifications to get the kind of job where they call you boy. My old man was the same way. He filed things in a big office. Called him boy. Till they noticed the bald head. Then he was called pop. How do you live, Frank? Ah, sometimes I tout. Sometimes I rack pool balls. I know a man that drives a long black car. He thinks I'm good luck. Takes me to card games and rubs the back of me hand for luck. Go away, Clover. Leave me alone. I can't do that. You're still my prime suspect. Oh, you think I lied to you? It's been done in murder cases. Like maybe it was the other way around. That's huh? right. Like maybe Eleanor Corbett came to see you and it was Al who took the walk. And later I killed him, huh? Maybe. Come on. I said, come on, Frank. Let's go downtown. All right, all right. Look, Clover, can't this wait till tomorrow? My friend wants me to play lucky tonight. He wins, he slips me a saw, but sometimes he gives me a couple of shakes. Come on. Don't crowd me. Look, I got this one suit. It don't have to be ruined yet. Yeah. Yeah, what? Back in your room, Frank. Sure, sure thing, Clover. You keep your clothes in this closet, Frank? Me and Al. There it is. The one suit. Al. Mine's on me back. But the combined shirts and unmentionables are in that chest of drawers. You want to look, Clover? Clover did. Frank helped me. He had quite a collection of shirts, monograms, but that's not what I was looking for. Al's shirts were broadcloth and plain, but they didn't have what I was looking for either. I didn't need anything but in that room. Then I went to a place within the Bowery, and the gilt on the window that spelled Goodwill Mission was flaked. And inside, a man told me his name and told me that coffee and stew would be served right after the prayer meeting. Yeah, but you don't look like the kind of man who needs a hand out. Oh, thanks, Mr. Stamponi. I'm from the police. I suspected that. Uh, whoever you want to see, can't you wait until after the prayers? Uh, they start in ten minutes. From time to time, Mr. Stamponi, as I understand it, people call you and have you send around a truck to pick up magazines, newspapers, old clothes. And... There are many such kind people. Did uh, Mr. Corbett call you? Well, yes, yes, he did. Uh, the truck received his donation just a few hours ago. Has it been delivered to you? Well, the truckload is all over there in the corner after the prayers. The men will sort it. Hey, come on, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Didn't have such a good day today. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is it. Oh, yes, yes, there's a tag on it from Mr. Walter Corbett. Do you mind opening it, Mr. Stamponi? It'll have to be done anyhow. Mm -hmm. Ladies' dresses. Mind if I look? Pretty dresses. That's a young woman's. Does this look like a young woman's dress to you? <laughs> oh, of course not. It's a man's suit coat. We can use that. We'll clean off the paint and... Don't bother about it. I'll take it. Thanks, Mr. Stamponi. again, Mr. Clover? What now? We'll talk about it inside. I told you I didn't want to know anything more. Ellen is dead. Now, just leave her alone. Leave her alone. Let's just go inside, Mr. Clover. I've just come back from Eleanor's funeral. Very well. Come in. Now, what do you want? Did you kill your wife? Kill Ellen? Do you mean that? Oh, yes, you do. I can see by your face you mean it. And I thought you were a kind man, Mr. Cloak. Well, you're a cruel man. Did you kill Al Martin? Is this what happens to people like you? Nice piano, Mr. Corbin. It's paid for. Eleanor wanted to study music, and I bought it for her. But she lost interest in it. It makes the place look homey. Yeah, it happens that way. Well, I didn't mind. This is a snapshot album. Oh, all my life with Eleanor's in there. Here, yeah. here, yeah, now just let me show you something. You remember I told you she had beautiful hair? Just look at that. On far Rockaway, last year when I took my vacation. Look, look at that. Look at this. 
son of it. Then why'd you kill her? Why you? You killed. You make me remember things, good things, and then you say I destroyed them. Are you through in here, Mr. Crowley? You're going to get out now and leave me alone? Miss, in this case of seashells, another memento of your happy life together? Put them down. Put them down. I, I bought those. I bought those for Eleanor. I told her I found them on the beach. But I sent away for them. I wanted to... She was so interested in so many things. Sure she was. Al Martin. You followed her to his room, waited outside in the hall. When she left Al, you slugged her and threw her out of the window. Yeah, but I loved her. I was... T- even when no one was around. Then was waited for Al. Followed him, too, to a bar. Sat with him. Maybe talked to him. Stabbed him. I was never there. I never followed her. I never followed anybody. Mr. Corbett, I have a coat out in my car. A man's coat. Yours. The one you sent to the Goodwill Mission. What are you talking about? The mission will get it back. They'll have to clean it. But they've got ways to take paint off clothing. Paint? Green paint from the tenement where Al lived. Off the door, off the banister, off something where, where you struggled with your wife. On your coat, green paint. Oh, you're crazy. I was never there. Green paint on your coat. Oh, oh, yes, I remember. Yes, I did get some paint on my coat. That's why I gave it away. But it wasn't green. It was yellow. That's right. Yellow. The color of the paint in Al's tenement house. The color that's on your coat. I loved Eleanor. She didn't know how much. I tried to tell her, even out in the hallway when she came from Al's room. I tried to tell her. I wasn't angry. I just wanted her to know how wrong she was. She was the one who was angry. I I tried to reason with her. And then she slapped me. Eleanor hit me. Eleanor. And that made me furious. I hit her. I hit her. I hit her. And then I didn't want her anymore, so I... I threw her away. FBN presents, you've been listening to some of the best in radio drama. With Fibber McGee and Molly and Broadway is my beat. Join us again Monday evening at the same time, 9.05, when FBN presents Dragnet and Escape.